This video is sponsored by Stash. Over 80% of us use some form of social media. It's a means to stay connected with friends, share memes you think are funny, and pass the time seeing what others are up to. For those of us who use social media, the average time on these platforms adds up to 144 minutes per day. For context, that's roughly the same time it would take to watch the entirety of The Shawshank Redemption or the first Avengers movie. Recently, my brother Cam has been trying to explore how his life would look if he temporarily cut himself off from social media, spending one month without his phone, and more recently, a week in solitude with no phone, internet, or social contact. I think the trendy way to describe a short-term cleanse like what I tried would be a dopamine detox, as the intent is to reset your mind through a period of de-stimulation. The logic being that our brains have been conditioned to crave dopamine hits, or distractions, and our over-dependence on these hits has the effect of limiting our focus, increasing our stress, and adding to an ever-increasing anxiety. So really for the last, whatever it's been, about 10 years or so, has been this grand experiment that we have never, ever, ever been possible to do in the entire history of humankind, which is what happens if we get rid of every last moment where you're just alone with your own thoughts and observing the world around you. And I would say the results of this experiment have not been positive. This is Cal Newport. Cal is a Georgetown professor and author of six books, including his most recent, Digital Minimalism. I sat down with Cal to talk about why so many of us struggle to balance technology and social media in our lives and why that struggle only appears to be getting worse. The issue that we began to have with our technology didn't come from just the introduction of social media. It actually came from an important period of transformation led by the social media companies that occurred roughly between 2010 and 2012 with the explicit goal of getting user minutes up. They said, no, it's no longer gonna be about looking at people you know's wall we're going to create the news feed and we're going to have algorithms select content from all sorts of different places. People you know, people you don't know, news sources that you have no actual personal connection to. These algorithms are going to collect things and put them into this one endlessly scrolling stream. And they're going to use advanced statistical algorithms to try to select things that are most likely to keep you scrolling. From the beginning, the internet has allowed us to engage multiple browsers in tasks simultaneously. For me, that looks like me listening to music while I'm video chatting a friend as I bounce back and forth between Twitter memes and a recipe that I'm trying to cook for dinner that night. And that constant switching of attention is in and of itself addictive. But when you add to that experience constant access through our phones, it becomes easier and easier to lose that battle for our attention to the digital world. Not only does that deprive ourselves of necessary time for self-reflection, but it creates a constant state of simulated social interaction that has the added effect of wearing us down. These all fall under the, the general category of what's called attention engineering, which is where you put a lot of really smart people to think about the single engineering goal of how do we get people looking at the screen longer. With Facebook, for example, their original color for the notification badge was a light blue because Facebook had a corporate palette, grays and blues. The attention engineers came back and said, no, it's gotta be alarm red you see alarm red, your brain is much more likely uh, to click on that button. Mm -hmm. We know that engineers in Silicon Valley were studying the research that came out of Las Vegas casino gambling, where they were actually trying to figure out for their digital slot machines, what's the optimal reinforcement table? That is, what's the optimal rate at, to get various levels of rewards from a slot machine that'll keep someone pulling that lever more? So there's been a lot of effort that went into this, this crucial question. How do we get people to look at their screen more? Because if you're Facebook, uh, if you're Twitter, answering that question is just as urgent as ExxonMobil answering the question, how do we get more oil and natural gas out of the ground? It is fundamentally their business model to maximize every single minute they can keep you on that screen. So we're strung out because our brain is exhausted from being in this high alert state all the time. We don't have the grounding that comes from constant repeated reflection and examination of the world around us. So people feel like they are just unmoored and anxious in the sea of frenetic digital energy and don't know what to do with themselves. It's almost impossible to think about effective time management today without factoring in the pull of the digital world. Trying to accomplish meaningful work on devices that simultaneously offer up access to friends, videos, and algorithms built to draw us in and suck our attention up. 
Unfortunately, just being aware of the power of these devices isn't enough to ensure you won't get pulled in. For Cal, the solution was simply to go without ever using social media. And he has a pretty popular TED talk where he explains the reasons why. For those of us who aren't ready to give up social media for life, Cam asked Cal if he would recommend a digital detox and what you should do after it's finished. But first, I wanna talk about the sponsor of this video, Stash. If you're looking for a productive way to use technology, Stash is one of the fastest growing investing platforms in the US right now, helping forge the future of financial services. Traditional banking oftentimes leaves people behind and it isn't always as accessible as we want. And this is where Stash comes in. With one app, you can take control of your banking, investing and financial education all while saving for your future. And if you're like me and investing is a bit intimidating for you, Stash can help break down your options by offering easy to understand educational content and can help customers navigate their financial lives through ongoing guidance and up-to-date recommendations. And it's nice because you don't need much money to get started. Through fractional shares, you can begin investing with as little as $1. If you feel like you're ready to start your stash, you can choose from one of their three plans. Each one can help you reach different goals and includes unique features. Plus, for Goal Guys viewers, when you open a stash account, stash will give you a $15 sign up bonus when you click through the link below and follow the instructions. So if you're ready to start saving for your future, head to the link below and start saving today. Also, just a heads up, because this is a financial product, you've probably noticed the disclosure text at the bottom of the screen. If you're curious about that, what all that is about is down in the link. You can read through it for yourself. Now, back to Cal. I often am a little bit wary about the, the detox terminology in this context because I think it's used wrong. Mm. When people say things like dopamine detox or say things like digital detox, what they're usually talking about is breaks. You know, I'm going to take a break from this for a little while uh, so that I can temporarily feel better, almost like a fast or something like this. Where, of course, the whole point of a detox, which comes out of the substance abuse community, is to use it as the foundation of lasting positive changes in your life. My retort is, don't take a break, reconfigure. Mm. You need something stronger than a detox if you actually want to change your relationship with these tools. Going away for, it's useful to get insight. But to step away from your phone for a weekend like people do or to take a digital Shabbat on Saturdays or something like that, but I guess it's better than not. But it's like telling someone where like drinking is causing a problem in their life. Like, okay, I've got a solution. You're not going to drink on Saturdays anymore. Well, I guess that's a little bit better, but probably the bigger solution is like, well, maybe you shouldn't be drinking so much on any day, yeah. you know, that you should be making actual lasting changes to your life. And so yeah. it's a little bit of an aside to your question, but I tell people, if you want to do a detox, do a real detox which right. is use a drastic break as a foundation for lasting permanent change. Yeah. And what do you think are some steps that people can take to make that permanent change? Because it is tough to cut out things like social media and change habits that are so deeply ingrained in us. Yeah. Well, one thing I found when I've looked into this is that uh, removing digital stimulus that are causing some negativity, removing them just because you don't, you don't like the negative side effects. Like, okay, I'm doing this too much. So I want to try to do it less is actually not a very effective way of achieving lasting success. Mm. So what seems to work better, and we know this from other types of communities where people have done similar changes, is to instead focus on the positive, what you really want in your life, what you're trying to get to in your life, what's important to you in your life. And then say, great, I'm now going to reconfigure my digital habits to promote those things, mm. to help me achieve these positive things. So when, when, you're, when you're going after the pursuit of something important, you're much more likely to have lasting change than if you're trying to instead eliminate something that is annoying you. Because in the moment you're like, I do look at this too much, but is it really so bad if I just look at it now, I'm bored. But if you say, I don't have this social media platform anymore, and this one I only use on my desktop, and I check in twice a week because you know what, I wanna reclaim this time to spend more time with my family, to work on this business, to get more connected with my spirituality, whatever it is, there's positive things pulling you are way more powerful. And so now you're like, if I go back and do this, I'm giving up all this great positive stuff. And actually, I really prefer the positive stuff than the quick dopamine hit. So this has been my advice to people. Rebuild your digital life to support what you really care about, not to get away from the things you dislike. When you look at each day as a limited number of hours, it's important to ask yourself, what are the moments I wanna use this time for? 
Am I spending it building relationships I care about, doing work that I find rewarding, and maybe even improving the world for someone else? After my week in solitude, I decided to delete Twitter off my phone as that was the main culprit for pulling my attention, and I've actually been able to gradually cut my screen time by more than half. And you may decide on a solution that's more or less drastic, but what I think is important is to take some time and really think about the positive change that you want to see in your own life, and to use those goals as the foundation for lasting change to your digital habits. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you're interested in watching more videos on managing technology in a healthier way, then you should definitely check out our videos on going without a cell phone for 30 days and our video on going seven days in complete solitude. I've linked both of those at the end of the video, so you can give those a watch if you're interested. Also, want to say thank you to Cal Newport for taking the time to sit down and chat with us. If you haven't read one of Cal's books, definitely add it to your list. And if you're interested in hearing more from him, you can also check him out on his website, www.calnewport.com. Anyways, guys, that's it from me, and I'll see you in the next one. Cheers.